Okay? Sense organs. Uh, we have five sense organs that we know, but they not only collect just five senses, but more than that. Like, uh, for instance, the skin is not just designed to uh, perceive touch, it can uh, perceive pressure, pain, and a whole lot of things. Okay? It can also perceive texture. Right? The ears, the other uh, sense organ is your ears. It's not only designed to hear sound, it can also keep the body, body's balance. That too, there are two types of balances. One is the static balance and the other is dynamic balance. So therefore, when we talk about five sense organs, it's not just five senses that are perceived, but more than that. We'll start with the eye as the first sense organ. The eye is a very complex organ next to the brain. It's very complicated, but we'll just try to make it as simple as possible. It contains photoreceptors and the rods and the cones, which we shall discuss later on. And um, let's go on to discuss the external parts of the eye. We have, we have eyebrows, eyelashes, and eyelids. Um, eyebrows and eyelashes, the male hair, their only purpose is to prevent dust particles to enter the eye. Eyelids, they have a uh, several roles to play. They protect the eye, first of all, protection. Second, it smears or it uh, coats the surface of the eye with uh, tears or lacrima. Lacrima contains a lot of nutrients. It supplies, it helps spread those nutrients all over. And uh, eyelids, when, uh, when we talk about eyelids, it is the only, we only we are only able to move the upper eyelids, not the lower one. We cannot shut or bring up the upper eyelids to close our eyes. It's only the top ones, the upper eyelids that drop down and close the shock down. Okay, and in some animals there's another third eyelid known as the nictitating membrane, which actually sh shuts from side to side. Okay, it closes this way. We also have this third eyelid, but that remains undeveloped as a pink rolled up part here in this end. Okay. This side we have that pink uh, tissue. The nictitating membrane is a transparent membrane and you can see the best example would be a crocodile which lives in water and it has to hunt in water. So, it has to, it needs to protect the eye as well as see through the murky water. So it uses its nictitating membrane which shuts the eye, protects it, but it's still able to see through those uh, transparent lids. So that's the th third eyelid. Then we move on to the structure of the eye. Whenever, if you're asked to draw the structure of the eye, okay, you just draw three circles because the eye is just made up of three layers. Most of the important, uh, the most important layers: sclera, choroid, and retina. So three layers, and then you begin to draw these in detail. Okay. On the opposite end, you have fovea, yellow spot, black, uh, what do you call? the blind spot, etc. So if you begin with the three layers, it will be easier for you to draw. Let's move into the structure. The outermost thin membrane that shields the front part of the eye is known as your conjunctiva. If it's injured or infected, it causes conjunctivitis. It, it basically turns red and um, it's very contagious. It spreads from person to person very rapidly. So this uh, conjunctiva is also known as Zyvonglad that red eye. So this is what it is. The next layer, or let's say the first layer, this layer is called sclera. It's fibrous, fibrous and it's tough. It provides protection. Its main job is to provide protection. So here it, is, it comes, this is the part where you see your eye is white, that part. Okay? But it also perceive the pain. If you touch, 
your, the, the white part with a small pencil. I'm not asking you to do it, but if you do, you'll realize it's very pain, painful. painful. On the front part, the sclera modifies itself to form a fixed lens known as cornea. So this is cornea. It is made up of cells. And yet it remains transparent. Now we see this in the epidermal cells of the leaf also. Epidermal cells are also transparent. It allows the light to enter through. So in the same way, this also allows light to enter through. And these cells require nutrients. That's how the tears and the eyelid bring about those nutrients there. And then, <coughs> this is the main fixed lens of the eye. Most of the refraction or the bending of light is done by cornea. Then we move on to the next layer known as the choroid. This layer is called choroid. It's slightly dark in color and it has lots of blood vessels. It's dark so that it can prevent reflection within the eyeball. So once light enters, it cannot reflect all around. So that is prevented by this dark layer. It also contains huge number of large number of blood vessels in order to supply nutrients to all the cells of this uh, different tissues that form the eye. And it also removes the waste from it. So the choroid right behind the cornea. You know, it modifies itself to form two structures. One is this one, the other is this. So this is called iris. Not irish, a guy from Ireland, the iris. And uh, the iris can close, it can really shut down this tiny pore or it can widen up, which we shall discuss later. And the second structure it forms is this one, known as the ciliary muscles. The contraction of ciliary muscles will change the shape of the lens. So this is the lens. The soft ball sort of structure, with the, the shape of which can be changed by the contraction of ciliary muscles. And um, these are the yellow ones that you see here, a suspensory ligaments they connect the ciliary muscle to the lens uh, then we move on to the innermost part innermost layer of the eye known as retina and it contains photoreceptors photoreceptors called rods and cones rods are good for dim light Cones for bright light. Dim light, I mean, uh, rods are designed to capture images in dim, dim light and they form black and white vision. Or it's also known as visual purple. And uh, cones are designed to work in bright light and they, <coughs> they give the color of vision which is very sharp. Okay. The reason why we say it's, it's not black and white but purple vision is if you happen to um, you know, just notice when you walk at night in darkness it's not black and white that you see. Those images are in uh, shades of purple or dark purple. So that's the reason why we talk about visual purple. And then on the retina, we've got two structures, very important structures, called this depression is called the yellow spot, also known as the fovea centralis. I've often seen them use this term to denote the yellow spot. Uh, but the importance of it is this is the place where there is a high concentration of cones 
If we are talking about bone cells and high concentration of bone cells, then we are talking about color division here. So this is the place, yellow spot is the place of the clearest, sharpest colored vision. And this part is, it, it contains more of raw cells. These are the portions which contain more of raw cells. And therefore, they are the ones that actually work at night or dim light. So we can take this uh, retina as a cup-like structure. It's kind of like this. And we find the whole layer. This is the part where you find more of rods. And this is the part where you find more cones. Bright light, clear, uh, sharpest vision and colored vision here, dim light and uh, visual purple or black and white vision. So this is the retina. And then we have another um, structure known as this white thing that you see here is the blind spot. The blind spot is the spot where no vision is, um, no vision occurs here. I mean, this part is not capable of capturing images at all because this is the point where the optic nerve um, begins or originates. So there are no photoreceptors here. All these photoreceptors come and they join the nerve endings of the optic nerve. There are two sets of uh, nerves here. So this joining does not have any uh, photoreceptors. So that is the part where no vision occurs. So that's called the blind spot. And from here the optic nerve takes the image to the brain. So it is the brain which actually sees the image. Okay, we'll stop there. It's sorry, sorry, so one more point. This whole thing, this part is covered by a fluid known as your aqueous humor. Sorry, this is humor. Vitus humor covers or is present inside this part. And aqueous humor is present here, right after the cornea and before or ahead in front of the lens. So this is the aqueous humor. They have very important jobs to play because they have contain a lot of minerals dissolved in it. So if you're talking about a liquid with minerals, we're talking about solutions. Now solutions have a higher uh, potential to bend or refract light okay, uh, in comparison to pure water. So this also has a role to play in turning or you know refracting or bending the light. So it plays, I mean it can cause some kind of disorder which we shall discuss later on. But the thing is, the important thing to remember is it can change the shape of the eye it can be elongated like that, or we can elongate top to bottom or front to back. Okay? And it can bend like Once the vitreous humor is made uh, in, in a baby, that vitreous humor remains till death. But aqueous humor is constantly uh, produced all the time. So that's it.